Welcome to The Third Chair, a show about real people, real stories, real life. And here are your hosts for The Third Chair, Peter Grigg and Doug Bozeski. Well, we have two new first-time events tonight, Doug. Two? Wow. Two, yes. yes one we, is... I can only handle one. So uh, yeah, it, me too. Well, Julia Hillary, uh, our artist, uh, was on the show for a couple episodes a year ago. She is back with her husband. And I giving remember an both update. of them. They're a very nice young couple. And they've, show, they've got some surprises to share. She's done so, a whole bunch of new art using some new digital techniques. She'll be on the show tonight. Oh, that's great. And we're introducing the producer oh, who has a microphone. Wow. Yeah, who, I don't know about that. I, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, he, he, Doug tried scared. to hide it from me earlier, but I found uh, it. He, yeah. It scares me. Yeah, and, uh, we're, he, we'll, he used it in rehearsal. Yeah, we'll be getting some ad hoc comments while we're while we're filming. Uh, I don't know. So this. I'm at least excited about having Julia and her husband Ty back. That's the good news. That's the good news. Welcome to the third chair. We have Peter back and uh, our guest is a, a repeat guest. The first time oh, about a year ago, wasn't it? April. Yeah. 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 April 2021. 11 months. 11 months. April. Well, Peter, do you go back and study these issues? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get the memo from the producer? <laughs> I got it, but I don't read any of his memos. <laughs> Neither of you really read them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> it's like a voice from God. <laughs> so, so, so what's been going on in the last year? You look like you got a certain glow to you. Well, I mean, obviously I've... Uh, I changed jobs. Um, we still live in our same apartment, but we are expecting a little boy in about three, three to four months here. Wow! Oh, wow! Yeah. How exciting! And um, did did either Peter or Doug get into the possibilities of names? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we thought of a lot of names. <laughs> One of my friends was adamant they, that we named it after him. They paged through the book and they went through the D's and the P's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, Peter, nope. Doug, <laughs> nope. <laughs> no, now, did Ty, did Ty's name get into the running for the boy? His name's Tyler. <laughs> We're uh, like, there's 17 billion people probably named Tyler. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Unless his name is spelled with an O, so everybody calls him Taylor and is oh, like super yeah. annoyed with that so we wanted to go with something a little more non-traditional that probably none of his classmates are going to be named that so mm. he's not going to get confused so what, what's the name again so we're naming him uh, Rio Lupin Hillary Rio Lupin Hillary and Lupin yeah. I like Lupin because it's a wolves and I love wolves yeah that's good. But how about Rio de Janeiro? Was that a possibility? <laughs> that's what I'm going to tell people that don't need to know his real middle name. Yeah, that's why he's spelled with a Y. Yeah, and that's why he studies Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, there you uh, go. Uh, if you're mad at him, you can go Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> you'll know you're mad at him. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's like when your mom pronounces all three of your names very slowly, you know you're in <laughs> big trouble. It was even worse for me because I had two middle names, very oh, British. Peter, William, Stanley, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Stop hitting your sister. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. That, that was the worst trouble you got and you weren't too bad. <laughs> My mom dealt out the discipline with a Hot Wheel track. Oh you know, God. and then and she never. Oh, the, yeah, the the the, the, the ooh, orange ooh, floppy ones. They're about yeah, that long. yeah, they're that long. And you know, she could never like hit you in the butt. <laughs> it was it always managed to get you like in the small of the back, so it ooh, hurt it's more. Even worse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then if you laughed when you got hit, you got hit again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but my mother was great. She was very, very. Um, you know, she only she we had very few rules growing up. One of them was you don't hit girls. Mm-hmm. You know, you hit a girl, you face the Hot Wheels. That was like one of the few (laughs) rules I had growing up, yeah. We didn't have that rule because uh, I hit my brother so much that I think my mom was just like, you can hit her back. (laughs) Just don't hit her too hard or in the head. 
No, the the yeah. only it's only, hard not to hit too hard. Yeah. <laughs> well, the the only exception that my mother allowed that I did actually do in life is that if you're both studying martial arts and you have all the gear on, then you're allowed to hit a girl. Yeah. That was it. Sometimes my wife and I would have to spar in Taekwondo, and she would always win because. I like couldn't take it seriously. Yeah. And then she'd kick me. <laughs> it's like, okay, and darling, I won't be too much. Whap. <laughs> yeah. She didn't take it easy on you. Right? She didn't take it easy on you. She rather enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she did. <laughs> so, so have you? Um, what what is your new job? Uh, right now, I'm working as an assistant or a admin assistant, I guess, to a financial advisor. Uh, I'm not going to be doing that much longer because once the baby comes, I'm going to be staying home with him. Yeah. And I mean, it's not what I ever wanted to be doing. It was just sort of something I needed to do for the money and the time because I loved working um, at the gym, obviously, mm -hmm. but it just, the early mornings and I wasn't getting mm -hmm. enough hours, but I couldn't do more hours because I was already so exhausted. Right. So I was like, I need something that's going to pay a lot and not kick my butt so much. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so you haven't been back doing the mermaid? No, they or... actually, this is, so <laughs> uh -oh. I was like, I was ready to go back and I'd message them time and time again saying, and they're like, oh, we're not ready. They were just having like the girls that were already there for other jobs, like dive instructors and stuff, doing mermaid stuff. And then one day they finally told me, hey, you can come back now. We'll get you on the training schedule as soon as possible. And I was like, yes, I get to go back after two years because I told them I'm a little worried about like diving back down. Do I get training? And they're like, yeah, we'll give you at least a month of training before you get back in. Just as they sent me my schedule, I found out I was pregnant. So I'm like, and you can't dive when you're pregnant because it's yeah 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 yes. bubbles in the bloodstream. So yeah, you're gonna hold this over poor Rio's head when he's no, because yeah, I'm gonna go back. Now. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna go back once he's done, but I'm only gonna go like saying, twice. You know a what a draw that could be, you know. And at two o'clock, the pregnant mermaid. You know, <laughs> oh, mommy, I want to see that. <laughs> that could have been like a huge draw. Oh gosh, no, those tails, those little silicone tails, like glue your legs together and they're so tight up top I'm like I don't think I could fit my belly in one of them unless it was already way too big for me uh, and then I don't think I could swim in it. For the no. Baby. Yeah. Yeah. Not good for anybody really at that point. <laughs> <laughs> well it's always uh, impressed me the kinds of things you've tried. Although yeah. I do have fabric tails that I can wear. I have two like $600 fabric tails at my house that I can put on and I think we're going to do that for our, like maternity photo shoot so. That'll be fun. Oh, well, are you oh, do they have maternity photo shoots now? Uh, I mean, in general, everybody does maternity photo shoots. I think not everybody, but a lot of women do. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking, oh. I think I should do that, especially with my tails, because I have no other reason to take pictures right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you know, in some of the um, uh, European countries and some places around the world, they do underwater births. I don't know if you've ever seen that. Doesn't sound appealing to me. <laughs> I, I had to watch. My wife was pregnant. She had to watch these women having babies, and one of them was underwater. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. popular around the world. Yeah, I saw and one that was yeah. like a dolphin-assisted birth, and I was like, "That's a terrible idea." Your <laughs> dolphin, dolphin. that, dolphins aren't nice. Like a some dolphin of them are okay. Assisted um, birth. But she's like, "I'm going to go mm. in the ocean where there's dolphins and have them help me out," and they're like, "They're going to eat your baby. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're going to oh, try man. to eat your baby." <laughs> oh man, uh, this one lady we watched, she, she made whale song, like. That was worse than the actual birth, so I guess that was good about the film. The, the, the actual birth seemed easy after uh, wa watching the lady with the whale sounds. Yeah. Well, you know, I think it's important to remember that we're willing to cover any topic here on the third chair, including whale births, <laughs> dolphin-assisted human birth. <laughs> oh man. Oh, so, 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 have you? Your other goals besides work, I mean, you're into your artwork. Have you been able to work on that? I have year? been able to. Um, the one thing that's really nice about my job right now is um, I work almost full time. I work like 38 hours, 36 to 38 hours a week. And um, I have so much downtime because there's not really that much to do. There's two financial advisors. One of them does mostly most of his own work because he doesn't have that many clients. And the other one is like 
it's really not that busy. So sorry I brought you in for all these hours and you don't really need to be here. And I'm like, that's fine. I pull out my iPad and I start drawing or animating or something in my downtime. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I've had a lot of time to do digital art. And yeah. we're going to look at a lot of her art later in the program. Yeah, including those times when you just had to doodle on a yellow sticky note. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know, I said, you show me those before the show and they look good. Yeah, yeah, you're very <laughs> talented. Yeah. Very talented lady. Uh, so I, have you enjoyed the last year? I mean, a lot of stress in the world, have you? I've enjoyed most most of the circumstances. Um, I mean, I took up roller skating for a while and that was really fun. I like went park skating and stuff. Um, I tried to get more into swimming, but there's, you know, there's really not a lot of places to swim here unless you yeah. have money or you live in a neighborhood that has a pool. And um, let's mm -hmm. see, I tried pole dancing. I did pole dancing classes for a while. Pole Ooh. dancing. A lot of women are doing pole dancing. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's probably the best core workout I've ever done in my life. Oh, is that right? <laughs> I got up from like level one to level five in a matter of five months, I think. Wow. And they were like, how did you progress so fast? I'm like, I used to be a fitness trainer. That's literally the only reason is I already mm -hmm. use these muscles, so I didn't need to train them. Um, wow. But I had to stop that, obviously, when this happened, because mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. hard. It's just hard. Okay, the next question is hard, but we're going to give you time to think about it. What advice would you give your younger self? And we'll ta discuss that after this break. Okay. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Grigg, a life and recovery coach at Pikes Peak Recovery Coaching. I've had the pleasure and privilege of helping people for over 25 years. I want to hear your story, support and encourage you while we partner together to help you reach your goals. I can help you. I am certain I can help you. I can be your guide, role model, resource person, and help you get results. What's my coaching frameworks? I'm an eclectic coach drawing from a variety of disciplines and frameworks with evidence-based proven methods. What would you like to work on? Some popular areas are goal setting and attainment, building and maintaining motivation, finding purpose, personal development, recovery from drug and alcohol addiction problems, health and wellness, life planning, athletic and creative artist performance enhancement, maybe something else, just ask me. I would love to help you. You can find my services on Fiverr.com. Okay, we're back with Peter. He wants me to mention him first. If mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of narcissists on the set. <laughs> There's Peter. Yeah, Peter. Uh, and then Julia. There's Julia. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, There's a couple a minutes to think of an answer to the question. Uh, what would you tell your younger self? I would tell myself to get more involved in things because I think a lot of what a, what set my career in art and just making friends even back so much is that I just I didn't want to get seriously involved into anything I didn't want to join any art clubs or like try to go for galleries because I'm part of it was oh, I'm afraid of being rejected and the other part of me is what if I get accepted oh then I have to do that work and I'm like forced to do that work but honestly I do some of my best work when I'm forced to do that work that's the uh, fear, that's good fear of success. Yeah. The fear of yeah. success and how that changes your life. And that can be mm -hmm. scary too. I think it's yeah. more of a fear mm -hmm. of eventual failure. It's like, what if I succeed now, but I just can't keep up with it, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. everybody's disappointed? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's yeah. that's part of the equation. Yeah. Well, you know, for yeah. artists too, what, what also mm -hmm. happens is then, now that you've been successful, then you start thinking, do I have to make art that I know people are going to like rather than art that... I want to yeah, make because me. I have to, to do things to keep up the success. Mm -hmm. You know, and so. It, you know, it's interesting, uh, John Houston and our Orson Welles, because Orson Welles got stuck in his career because he, he was always fighting in the studio, and John Houston says, 
you know what? I make one of their movies one year, and then I, that makes a lot of money, and then I can do what I want, and then the next year I make one of their movies, so it makes a lot of money, and then I can make a film I want. Yeah. And he told Orson to do that, but Orson didn't listen. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you know, you look at the, the music group Rush, they, from the beginning, always made the music they wanted, and it really took four or five albums before it, it sort of... Caught hit on. big for the mm-hmm. radio, but yeah. they they still had a massive fan base that just liked their they, music. They had their core, and then, yeah. but uh, they weren't really big until later. Yeah, they used to tour with with Kiss, and 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 they used to say the Kiss used to say Rush. You know those Canadians, they'd like all go to bed at nine o'clock after the concert. <laughs> yeah, you know, they were all out drinking and partying, and and, uh, and Rush just went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, yeah, okay, we're going to talk about your pregnancy, second trimester. Okay, so what has been the most surprising thing about being a mom, getting the second trimester, the process? What what has, like, surprised you? I think the thing that surprised me the most is all of the horror stories I've heard from other women None of that happened to me. <laughs> like, no, like, so you didn't have, like, morning sickness? I mean, I had, like, nausea. A little bit, okay. And I, there were some times I'd be making dinner, and I'd catch a whiff of the, what I'm making, and he'd come in, and he'd be like, oh, that smells so good. And I'm like, really? Because I can't stand no. it. I need to go to another room. <laughs> I never threw up. My no. mom threw up six months when she was pregnant with me, nine months for my brother, and I never did. And I've, I've never really been able to throw up. I think I sort of have a phobia Mm -hmm. that keeps me from doing that, because even if I'm like, I would just feel better if I could, I'm like, but I don't want to. I can't. Mm -hmm. I can't Mm -hmm. force it. I can't. It just hurts. Don't want to do it. So Mm -hmm. that never happened. Um, I was really worried about gaining weight. Mm -hmm. And then when I went in, but the beginning of my second trimester, I went in to get weight, and she's like, you need to be gaining more weight. You're not gaining enough weight. And I was like, oh. So I'm actually doing really well in my head, but then I'm like, I need to change that because it's sort of the eating disorder thing. Like, wow, I didn't gain weight. And they're like, you're having a baby. You need to gain weight. I'm like, okay, I need to just accept that that's part of the process. So, so, uh, you know, on on the the shows back in April, you talked about some of your struggles with eating disorders. So you even find some of those thoughts have come up in your pregnancy. Yeah, because part of me is like, ugh, I I shouldn't eat this. I don't want to eat more than this today, but I'm like, but I need those extra calories. I'm literally growing a baby, person. Yeah. 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 Or like, well, I've, yeah, I've just been like, oh, I'm not really hungry right now, I've, but I've only had breakfast. I need to eat at so least dinner. <laughs> so you have, have you had cravings? Oh yeah. So what, what have you craved? Well, the, the hard thing is, is none of the things I've craved have actually satisfied the craving. There was one time I really wanted IHOP's blueberry pancakes. So, so you sent Ty out to get them? No, I ordered some <laughs> DoorDash. I was going to, but he refused. So um, I ordered some off of DoorDash. <laughs> well, uh, he had a point. He was like, you're not going to feel good after you eat them. And I'm like, but I want them so much. So I ordered mm-hmm. them. $30 I paid DoorDash for, a, like, it was. I think it was two pancakes. They weren't two even. Two pancakes? For th- they were so tiny. Silver then, dollar size, huh? Yeah, there or was like to call it silver dollar. I was like, what? I spent thirty dollars on this, and I tasted him. Didn't even taste good. Fifteen dollars well, for a silver dollar. Well, pack. you know what I'm gonna say? Yeah, they should, that, that's like if they're made of silver. But <laughs> you know, if you're craving those again, I will bring you over two small pancakes for twenty bucks. You can save ten. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, he's always being kind. Always <laughs> thinking about the other guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but now, you gotta put you gotta put the blueberries. I mean. And then was it blueberry syrup too? Yeah, or? it was the blueberry syrup. I don't know if they changed their recipe or if my taste buds changed, but it just Your didn't. Taste buds probably changed. A didn't little taste too. right at all. I was like, oh, these it's are probably awful, too sweet. Kind the of delivery to time up. changed too. Now, yeah. now s- some ladies uh, by this point have like a a nesting kind of um, instinctual response where they're now extra cleaning the house or setting up the baby's room or uh, have you had anything going you know or a studio for the baby <laughs> this um, will be her paint his paint uh. yep <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, it's been a little bit 
it's, it hasn't changed much because I'm already a very like my house has to be very clean sort of person but I've been noticing that it's like oh well now I want to like get the steam cleaner out and steam clean all the carpets out of no I did that earlier today literally for, I wasn't even really that dirty I just was like let's get the steam cleaner out and clean around the door a little bit the baby's room is half set up half of it's his office so um we have we have a bassinet. We don't have the crib yet because a lot of my family's coming in in April, so we're like we're gonna have a probably, baby shower. Yeah, things will show up. Yeah. 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 And a lot of it, my mom's like, don't even worry about anything. I'm gonna buy everything for him, and I'm like, okay, but I want to buy some things. <laughs> yeah, but but you know, encourage your mother in that way. Yeah. yeah now she was a difficult mother before, and now <laughs> she's the best mom ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't even think hurt. she was difficult. Yeah. I think yeah. I just yeah. Yeah. One of the things that surprised me is how many diapers they go through because someone gave me a big pack you know like this and I'm like well that will last a long time <laughs> yeah. Ah, no. yeah it's only yeah. a few long days long time yeah like a few days yeah. <laughs> yeah. alright so have you ever had a moment being pregnant where you like smacked Ty and said look what you've done to me <laughs> <laughs> um, I've smacked him for other reasons but oh, never because no. of that <laughs> No, that happens in the delivery room. <laughs> no, I'll probably bite his head off or something. No, <laughs> no most of the time, if I if I smack him jokingly, yeah, I'll feel bad I mean about it two seconds yeah. later, and I'm like, I'm so sorry. I get super emotional these days. It's so stupid. Like, well, that's that goes with the pregnancy too, with all the hormones that are changing yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Even if I pretend to be sad, I'm like, oh, you didn't give me lunch. I'll pretend to be sad, and then I'll get real sad, and I'll start crying. And he's like, why are you crying? This is ridiculous. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> that's uh, that's yeah. so awesome. All right, Doug, do you have a question? Yes. Um, <laughs> I knew the answer to that. We're going to talk about your art. When we come back, and I have a question for you to think about again. I ask such difficult questions. You do. That Peter made up. No. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a myth about being an artist and debunk it. So after this break, you can do that. Okay. <laughs> Doug, most of our uh, viewers and followers know that our new episodes come out on YouTube on Thursday nights. Right. But we have a new announcement about the third chair. Exciting announcement. Uh, the old, starting with the older episodes, they're now going to be on a TV channel. Yes, very exciting. So the TV channel is with the Pikes Peak Library District, Comcast Channel 17, here in Colorado Springs. And I believe the episodes are going to play at 7 o'clock at night, but they may cycle them, and who knows, maybe they'll be on at 2 or 3 in the morning. So if you're in Colorado Springs and you have Comcast and access to Channel 17, you're able to watch The Third Chair. The episodes are edited a little bit shorter. Some of uh, the commercials are taken out uh, on, uh, on TV. It should be exciting. Yeah, I can finally tell my friends... I'm really on TV. We could tell them we're TV stars. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Welcome back to the third chair, and we have Julia thinking here, and we'll forget about the other guy for a while. <laughs> <laughs> My name's so, De Janeiro. So, so, have you thought of an artist myth you want to debunk, or you, you just I would don't know? Say you were having troubles thinking about artist myth. <laughs> it's really tough for me to think because I I think I've fallen out of the the milieu of people that sort of think of an artist as one way because I've met so many diverse artists that do everything that I no longer have a stereotypical artist in mind. I'm sort of like, well, I mean, there's the the ones who want to live in France and wear the berets and paint in plein air, and I'm like, I mean, yeah, but that's not really true anymore. It's sort of everything is art, everyone does different kind of art, and I guess the only myth I can think of debunking, this could be debunking or supporting it, I don't really know which way I'm going, but that you can be born an artist or you can become an artist later in life. I, I, don't, I don't think it matters which way you start, I think it matters 
how mm. deep you dive into it. Because mm. a lot of people say, oh, you have to be born an artist, you have to be born a certain way. I was sort of born an artist mm -hmm. because the moment I could hold a pencil, I was drawing. And I remember my dad, like, she, he grabbed one of my, my drawings and showed it to my mom. And she's like, look, she drew eyelashes on the girls. She drew a whole body and hair and she got the hair colors right. And I've never seen that in a two-year-old before. Mm. And, like, I used to just express myself in picture, like, before I could write. And my mom was mad at me. I remember one time she sent me to my room. I drew a picture of me crying and then a picture of her hugging me and then I had hearts all around me and she, I was two. And she was like, this is advanced for a two year old. Now was that on the wall? On the no, it was on paper. On the dog, uh, yeah, on paper. Luckily it was on paper that time. Yeah, but was it on Pierre, your poodle, yeah. <laughs> Pe no, so. Pe Peter thought his wall when he was growing up was a drawing board, so. I'd wear the French parade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would I've too. gone to I, I've gone to I've gone to Paris. For a while, I I wanted to be that sort of artist, but that's when I was like ten to twelve. I was mm -hmm. like, yes, I'm going to be a fancy artist, and I'm going to live in Paris. And I wrote a horrible fan fiction about that when I was about thirteen. Mm. Where like you know the actor who played Draco Malfoy, Tom Felton. I wrote mm. a horrible fan fiction about that when I was thirteen, and where I was an artist and I lived in Paris, and he was my boyfriend. <laughs> But wow. So you had a crush on Malcolm. Yeah. <laughs> I had bad taste back then. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know, when they show him on the screen, like highlights of the show or in interviews, he looks like a fun, you know, guy who's really nice. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, mean, I'm sure he's a nice life. guy, but gosh, I I was only thinking about the uh, on-screen bad boy when I was 13. Yeah, you, you liked him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. 13-year-olds don't have good taste. But I guess the answer to your question would be, I don't think it really matters if you're born an artist or you become an artist later, because I've met so many artists that have done both, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I respect them both equally. I think they're both creating the same echelon of work, whether it be earlier or later, it doesn't really matter as long as you care about what you do. So <laughs> we are not going to settle the nature versus nurture debate tonight. <laughs> She's taking both sides. She's Life taking both sides. Right. Like, I Argue think I'm nature, but I think I'm also a little bit nurture because mm. once my dad saw me doing that, he was like, get her in art classes, get mm. her all the art supplies she wants, just Make her good. <laughs> you know, even if you've got talent, you got to work hard no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, like Michael Jordan and LeBron James have a lot of talent for playing basketball. Yeah, but they, they work. work. Yeah, you got to keep working work on it. Very hard during the off season. It's, I think it's just and easier if it's your nature because mm -hmm. then you're like, well, I don't have to force myself to work on it because I want to anyways. Well, and, and you can have certain advantages. I mean, if you're born with the genes to grow seven feet tall, that's an advantage for playing basketball. Yeah. Compared yeah. to the guy who's five foot four. Now that doesn't mean there's been five foot four basketball players, but they have to work in phenomenally hard yeah. to, you know, whereas maybe the seven foot guy doesn't or maybe he doesn't and becomes I mean, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well so, you can be mediocre seven footer I mean uh -huh. and play professionally as opposed, you can't be a me mediocre five, four basketball player and play in the NBA. I used to and love a, a Spud Webb. Well, the guy could like leap he, as high as a wolf. He was five <laughs> seven. <laughs> yeah, he was five seven. He won the NBA slam dunk. Wow. Yeah, I mean that was amazing. He he, he was amazing to watch. Maybe he had really good knees. <laughs> yeah, you know how long did that those last? Yeah, yeah, yeah because Gosh, my knees are hurting just thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> up and down the, I mean. It, Things happen, you know, to those. <laughs> or like you're a catcher in baseball. I mean, bending up and down uh, 150 times during one game. Yeah. The, the um, so we're talking about art now. Yes, we're talking about art. What will, did you do? You wish that you knew when you were starting your career as an artist. What do I wish? Yeah, that you what know you now you that you didn't know at the time. I guess I wish that I would have sort of branched out or I wish that I would have known that it's better to branch out and look at your own creativity than it is to take so much from somebody else's ideas. Mm. Like 
I, th I think fan art is really good. But back when I was like a young teenager, it's all I made. When I was really young, I used to make my own comics and stuff, and I'd come up with these unique storylines. But then in middle school and high school, I just did like fan art, and I would take, you know, somebody else's work, and I feel like. I lost that creativity a little bit because I was focusing on so much on somebody else's work and it took a lot of work to get back to my own creativity. So do you feel, feel you have that more now? Oh yeah. I've been looking at my own style and I'm like, I'm doing a lot more original works. I'm doing a lot more of just things that I sort of, I mean, it's definitely been influenced. You can see the influence of things that I liked before mm -hmm. affecting my work now, but it's like... It's no longer all about that, and I'm just the person that makes it. Now it's like, it's me, and I feel like I'm more interested in my own work because it came from me rather than mm -hmm. coming from an outside source. It almost makes it easier to work on. Mm -hmm. What keeps you motivated? Because, I mean, you have a busy life. You work, you're married, now you're going to have a baby, and you have other things to do in the entertainment, uh, what keeps you motivated to do your art? I, I don't really think I even need motivation, because whenever I get bored and I don't, I don't, I don't ever think like, ugh, I wish I had the motivation to do art, it's just sort of, I wish I had the energy to do art, I always have the motivation, but like if I sit down in a room long enough, I will find something to draw on. It's just sort of, it's something that I feel like I need to do no matter what. I don't need anybody telling me to do it. I might not make the best work if I don't have a reason to or a motivation to do it, but I always do it no matter what. Mm -hmm, sure, yeah, I, I noticed you doodling on the uh, studio cameras right before we started <laughs> filming. Uh, yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, that uh, might uh, be uh, worth a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's autographed. You know, Julie we're, was we're here. sorry our producer made you clean it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make Peter clean it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Peter's holding a lot of pictures here. Yeah. Well, what are you holding those I, for? Um, on your uh, website, you talked about some of the influences of your art, and we're going to show the viewers as we do this, uh, and you can just com comment on them uh, as much as you like. Uh, and, and people can see what uh, the sort of three or four areas and then look at your art and maybe they can spot the influences and in what <laughs> you did. So here's the first one. This is, uh, you can hold, hold that, that'll go on the screen. That's Narto. You had mentioned one of your influences was uh, 1990s and 2000s cartoon. Did you watch a little Naruto in your time? Um, well, let me show you my socks right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing Naruto socks. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Um, I don't know, okay, I uh, Mr. Producer, do we got that? Uh, a Naruto sock? Okay. <laughs> yeah, we it's, it's we all, will have a shot. A uh, sock shot in the <laughs> sock shot. Yeah, sure. so, so Naruto and anime and uh, manga. I think mm. you hit it on the head when you said Naruto because that was the first time I was watching like Adult Swim and this is when they first started sharing um, or bringing Naruto dubbed over to the US. I was like nine or ten years old or something and I saw it and I was like this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. These girls are like tough, the boys are weird but they're tough and I'm like I sort of wanted to be them and I just I fell into that obsession from when I was nine to probably 18. Mm -hmm. wow. Like, I, I watched other things and I was obsessed with other things, but Naruto was like the one thing I always came back to as like my first. But you fell love. for Malfoy in that time frame. <laughs> <laughs> I felt, I mean, I liked Harry Potter for a little. He can't stay with one thing forever because then no. it gets boring. But I always came back to Naruto. Nice. Like, I, that's why I started. Like, this was one of my favorite characters, Lady Tsunade. Uh, I, I, I made a good <laughs> guess. And when we come back, we're going to talk about Japanese. Yukio e style. Yukio e. Yukio e. I sit corrected and we'll come back from a break right after this.
Welcome back to the third chair. That's Doug. I'm Peter, and that's Julio. Oh, wait a minute. That is <laughs> that is <What> Ty, <laughs> Julia's husband, who we remember from the two episodes that aired a while back in April of 2021. We actually filmed those back in November of 2020. And um, we're all still alive. You're still alive. That's yeah. so fantastic. Yeah. So what have you been doing? Uh, let's see. I had a career change into the federal government, working as a TSA officer. Oh, um, man. And it's nice, laid-back, easy job. I'm allowed to be all friendly. Be my, I get to be myself there. I got great co-workers, too. I'm loving the job. It gives me just enough time to work on my passion projects with story writing and like fantasy works and stuff like that, sure. too. So. Uh, so, like, when the bags are being scanned, and if you're like... You see a gun, like the people yell, "Gun, gun!" And, oh, and, and, and the like, last thing we want to do, <laughs> we try, we try to keep it on the down low to prevent like any possible panics. Yeah. Um, and we do have on-site uh, police officers as well to help us handle the situations. Worst case scenario, if anything gets out of hand. Do you, do you have a secret code? Like uh, that means uh, no. It's just hey, uh, lead supervisor, can I get some help? And that's pretty much it. Nothing crazy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but then we, we grenade, yeah. yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we, we yeah. keep it. We we try to keep it on the down low. So, yeah. um, when I took my twelve-year-old son uh, on some international trips to Europe and uh, uh, Romania and, and uh, Hungary, I had to tell him that you cannot make jokes about bombs. Oh, yeah, very <laughs> much so. Yeah, very even if you're so. a kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like, yeah. no. Uh, I tell yeah. my daughter, just answer the questions they ask you, very, very polite, and then you can go swimming tonight. <laughs> just, yes, <laughs> no, old, I don't old, know. Have a good, good day. Old, good old-fashioned bribery. bribery. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, and then uh, we went in this chain. I always had pools, and we went to a hotel with all pools, Without a pool, but she says, "Well, that's all right, Dad. We'll go out a pool the rest of the time." And I'm apologizing to her. So, there you go, there you so, go. So, so I bought her a soda, and she was happy. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have a friend who um, is a firearms uh, creator, and uh, he's got a class uh, three license. He manufactures firearms. Oh wow! And he just put his his firearm in his check-on bag. He just had a mental brief mental lapse. Yeah, and man, they all they 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 um, they found it and got excited. All the police came, and and the interesting story. I won't I won't say his name, but he he was very well known in the firearms industry, and like police from all over the city wanted to come and meet him. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We caught a celebrity. Yeah, uh, we caught a celebrity. Yeah, uh, yeah. and for the people that know yeah, firearms, yeah, yeah. they caught a celebrity. Yeah, and they just drop by. Hi. Yeah. Well, long story short, after um, uh, the lawyers were involved, I think he ended up with a fine for littering, <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. He got off lucky yeah. then. He so. did, but... You know, this was a, a case, I, I suppose, of, uh, you know, if you're really well recognized in the field and and had and a, a sterling well, reputation. I just and, yeah. yeah, I just go in, you know, I think he'd worked for the CIA before and stuff. You know, I don't know all the details. He doesn't talk about it. Uh, but, um, but yeah, so I imagine a day as a TSA agent could be fun. Oh, I mean, the, the fun part about it is just talking to the passengers that come by. I mean... Sometimes I get to meet people um, who are like other people who like like to wrestle. And I'll see them coming through, and they'll say, "Yeah, we're preparing for a fight." I'm like, "Hey, good luck, man. You know, uh, hope to see you next time on pay per view. You know." And I'll just <laughs> you know, just BS and have fun, and you know, so it's just good talking. WWE That's WWE most of my job. So. WWE wrestling? Oh no no no! Uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, like uh, oh, okay. MMA, so mixed martial arts, oh, fighting, or something like that. Oh, so yeah. going to a tournament or something? Yeah, occasionally. Oh, Occasional okay. passengers. We we do get a lot of uh, wrestlers actually come through for some reason. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's uh, I think it's not good when the airplanes don't serve a meal when you have a bunch of wrestlers on board there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's not yeah, getting yeah, food. food. I might just. Uh, Oh, we got a bunch of big guys. We maybe we better put a meal on this flight. Yep, 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 there you go. You know, so um, you, you know Julia, your wife. Uh, she yeah, was. I kind of know her. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. She was. Better uh, once or twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was just on the previous three segments. <laughs> she was mentioning that she's pregnant. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank so, you. So, um, as a, a a dad to be, what mm -hmm. is the 
process been like for you so far? Um, has it um, made you uh, rethink some things or think new things? or what, What's that process been like? Hmm. Well, we had to move our little makeshift at-home gym and make that room for the baby. Mm. Beyond that, you know, it's been easy for me, man. I don't know. I don't know what the deal with this pregnancy stuff is. It's so ah, easy. Ah. I don't know how people deal with it. Um, for me, so far, it's been easy, but I think that's mostly because Julie's been, she's been doing a great job. Yes. I have a feeling so. that um, when she gets back to non-pregnancy, I remember a little bit of Brazilian Jitsu, Jiu Jitsu on you. This is this is kind of what we call the uh, the pre fight talks, you know. Uh, so so yeah, there, this yeah. sells. This makes this yes, makes money. Yes, so. yes, um, so but no, shit, the best seriously, that was Muhammad Ali. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, no. Um, seriously, Julia's been. She, I, I don't know. It's like I don't want to say her personality's changed, but personally for me, I've seen how oh, like. She's developed. I I see a mother now, you know, and not just because she's pregnant. I'm just I'm actually seeing. Wow, like you're you're taking these second thoughts because you have another body that you're literally taking care of. And I was mm -hmm. just like, that's that's really cool, and I love seeing that. Yes. Um, again, the pregnancy thing for me, it's been really easy. Um, even when she gets like, even the like quote unquote emotional times, they're not they're not bad. I just hey, hang out with her. Find a way to crack a joke. She smiles. All right, we're good. It's pretty easy. Nice. So now, have you guys done like the the, the baby classes together uh, yet? You, or you know where you're gonna help her breathe? He he who and all that kind of stuff. Nothing. No, I don't. I mean, when it comes down to it, when she's giving birth to Rio, I'm gonna be there regardless. You know, mm -hmm. and I'll help out with whatever I can. So mm -hmm. I mean, he's my son. So of course. I, I figured they let the dad in the room, so. The mother has somebody to holler at yeah, yeah, yeah. instead of a doctor. Because that, I had a friend and he had three kids. He says, I still don't know what I'm doing in the room. And I took classes and everything. And I told him after my daughter was born, I think it's so the wife has someone she can take her frustrations off. See, you know, so. The biggest thing when it comes to the education of that is I got the best university in my pocket. It's called YouTube. I'm just going to look up videos and just go from there. Worst case scenario, I'll ask, uh, I got a couple buddies who are dads too, and say, hey, dude, um, the fire hose is going crazy on Rio. What do I do? You know, it's, you know, worst case scenario. You know? Um, but, no, beyond that, I'm, I'm excited. I really am. Um, when we first found out, it was kind of like an adrenaline rush. It was like, oh my God, you and I are going to be parents? Are you kidding me? You know? And then, uh, and then a couple months later, you know, it, it, it becomes serious and we're just like, yeah, we got this. We're gonna do this. You know, we um, thankfully we've built a really good support network between mm -hmm. both families and friends, mm -hmm. and I think that goes miles by itself. You know, yes. we just having mm -hmm. the support alone that makes it from like, hey, you know, so the stress of having a baby doesn't is it? It isn't stress. It becomes excitement instead. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, so yeah. My one piece of advice after having four kids yeah. is that. Um, it's okay to let someone else take care of the baby so you can take your wife out on a date. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, some moms are so possessed, they don't want to give up the child at usually all. Usually the first one. Yeah, mm -hmm. usually the first one, but it's it's like it's it's good to let someone else watch your child. And His wife let go. Peter even babysit the fourth one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah no, I, I, got, I got myself into a little trouble. Yeah, and so, um, <laughs> you know, um, uh, a little later on in uh, this show or, or in the next one, you mentioned that you're getting back into some art and writing. When yeah. we talked with you uh, on the previous episodes, you were just starting to get back into it or doing a little bit. So you, you've uh, got I, some uh, uh, momentum in that? Very much so. I've, uh, the, I think most of it comes with confidence and then consistency. Yes. And as long as I have the confidence to be able to improvise on the fly of uh, some type of verbal storytelling or writing, as long as I got that confidence and I know where my end goal is, the rest of it is just me having fun. And I was like, now I'm getting my formula down. Now I'm going to start trying to venture into finding strangers to say, hey, would you like me to host your event? And then go from there. Oh, nice, so. yeah. Well, I, I'm sure that if you ever need uh, pictures for, like, book covers or stuff, 
I, I can probably recommend you to a oh, good artist. Oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you'll be the first person I come to. <laughs> Very good. Well, we, were, we will be back in just a moment. We'll get back to our guest in just a moment. But do you have a story to tell? Would you, yes you, like to be a guest on The Third Chair? Send us an email and tell us about yourself and your story. And please follow us on social media. Now back to the episode. Welcome back to The Third Chair. That's Doug. I'm Peter. And we do have Julia back. Yay! Yay, Julia. Yay, Julia. So we've tried to make the uh, show uh, a little bit educational in terms of talking about some um, uh, historic art styles and the things that influenced Julia. And this picture is Japanese, can I say it right? Ukiyo, Yukio, uh, uh, our Mr. Producer will put it on the... Ukiyo-e. Uh, uh, ukiyo uh, <laughs> Sounds like a new restaurant in town. Yippee-yay. You, <laughs> you should do it when they called that. That would be a fantastic name for a Japanese restaurant. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. I'll, yes. I'll go and eat there. Floating World, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Floating World. Floating World Buffet. Something like oh, that would be so wow. good. <laughs> oh, that would be I so good. Cool. Yeah. 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 And so what did you like about this um, style um, colors, etc., that seem to influence your drawing and painting? I mean, in a time before animation or anything like that, these were very animated. Um, I think the biggest thing that drew my eye was there's, there's so much detail and emphasis on, like, the textures, and they're very flowy, and yet they're so simple, too. It's a very simple sort of line design, and then it's filled in with these bright, beautiful colors, and I think there's something that just stands out so much more about that. And you're not having to, you know, contour the faces. You just sort of get this very dreamlike feel, mm. which is what ukiyo-e is supposed to be very dreamlike and floating, and it's supposed to be very decadent and Yeah, so, so you had the Naruto influence, and then also this influence. I think Naruto was also sort of in. I really think that a lot of Japanese animation was already influenced by this style. Mm. So when I found this, which I did in my, I mean, my Japanese art history class in college, I was sort of like, I see why, why all of Japan is sort of making these sort of pictures, mm. because mm. this is their history, this is... It's their culture. This is, yeah. and a lot of them, like, I will say they're very sort of R-rated in nature, but that was because they were produced before... Um, the American um, imperialism sort of came in and outlawed a lot of things. And that's what led to most of the Japanese like animation styles. Is like, okay, we're not allowed to do this, but we still have to bring our culture back, so we're going to get weird about it. <laughs> ah, yeah. Well, that's fan fan interesting. And then another uh, area, uh, neoclassic, uh, and then I think you mentioned British neoclassic. I'm not sure if these are all British, but... Uh, and now, uh, here's one, and again, Mr. Producer will put this up. My understanding of neoclassic is that there are very realistic-looking uh, people in it, that the shading of uh, light to dark is done effectively to produce depth in the picture, yeah. and, and that a lot of the lines are very sharp and very crisp. That's my understanding of uh, some of the characteristics of the time. Yeah, and there's also, as you said, that light dark, which is actually called chiaroscuro, because it's like a different yeah. Italian yeah, word I for saw that. light dark. Yeah, <laughs> I can't even say yukio. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, it is, I think, a lot of the same elements that interested me about the ukiyo-e style also interested me about neoclassicism. Also, Although, I will say neoclassical, they actually didn't have a lot of women in it. Which I found very fascinating because it was a time when they were like, okay, yeah. we like the classical, but women are taboo, so now we're just going to do men. So this picture is actually sort of a little bit different. It's like it's definitely a neoclassical painting, but it's a little bit of a... They have the women. Yeah, because it has women in it, and it's very elegant, and you can see like she's wearing all these dark colors, and she stands out so much against this bright blue, and it's... There's something just very elegant, and uh, the textures, the textures, anything that has so much detail and texture. I will say I'm like, I'm into the, I think minimalist art is great if you can do it, 
but I really need to get in there with those nitty gritty details and textures to feel any sort of confidence and pride in what I'm making. Yeah, here's, here's another example. Of course, this one has like all men, <laughs> <laughs> but still. I mean, it's, it's, the, uh, it's sort of the Roman Greek mythology and old stories. And you can see there is there are women in it, but they're yeah, very but covered and shrouded and off to the side. Yeah, yeah. that one kind of interests me because all the guys are kind of like like yeah, very pointed and actiony. It's also sort of that animated feeling because mm -hmm. you can see mm -hmm. the story and the action behind the painting mm -hmm. without actually having to see it move. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. The um, so what we're going to do is we're going to wrap up now. I know you have your website up. Are people, are you still taking orders like for commissions? Are you doing that or is that on hold uh, with the pregnancy or what's I'm, going on with that? I'm doing it on a case by case basis right now. Um, I've had one request in the last few months from my website. Um, the gentleman didn't get back to me and I think it's because I told him I only ship within the US. Mm -hmm. And I also told him that some, some of my works um, if they want something super complicated for a commission, I'm like, I'm so sorry, I don't have the time or energy for that right now, but if you want something a little more simple, or if you want to buy something pre-existing, um, you can either get a print of it, or if it's one I'm willing to let go of, you can have an original. Mm -hmm. But I'm mostly doing, like, prints of originals that I already have. Okay. That's most of what I'm As, Is your website uh, uh, jmortenson.com? Julia Mortensen. Julia Mortensen. Of course, that was your maiden name yeah. when you got all your websites and that established before you got married. So that, is that the best way for people to contact you? Um, I think my Instagram is actually a little bit better. I check that a little more often. Um, the, okay. the requests from my website are supposed to come through my Gmail, or, yeah, my Gmail account and sometimes they just don't. Okay. So, so, so the uh, J Mort's art yes. is your Instagram? Yes. And so people can like direct message you. I've always thought that's so weird of a way of, of, uh, of getting uh, a message across, but again, I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> so we need to wrap up. We'll see you next week. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. This has been The Third Chair. Want to be a guest? Want to sponsor our show? Send us an email. Please subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.